All right, hello guys. I am back here with this new tag that I created. And I'm not sure if any other people in the tour community on YouTube have created this tag, but this is the Three Worlds Journey Dex tag. And I wanna give a lot of credit to this book I'm showing you guys here. This is The Shaman's Guide to Power Annals by Laurie Morrison. And if you guys are really into spirit animals and their meanings and a little bit of background on shamanism, this is a book I highly recommend. This is the best one that I've had and I've looked through a lot. So this is a personal favorite of mine. And so in this book, she talks about the three worlds of the shaman. And you guys can see how much I've highlighted it here. And in the shaman's world, she describes that they uh, separate the three worlds as the upper world, the middle world, and the lower world. And what shamans do is they journey into these worlds for guidance, for power animal retrieval, for getting evidence, um, and healing. There is a lot that they do and journeying is not limited to just shamans. We also can journey too. And usually journeying follows uh, with a beat of a drum playing, whether that is through audio or someone else. But yeah, I got this idea for this tag from this section of the book. So I am going to, as I go world by world, I just wanna read you guys um, the excerpt from it, okay? So a little background or a little um, instructions for this tag is um, to select one tarot deck and one oracle deck that you would take with you when journeying to either the lower world, the middle world, or the upper world. And so, uh, I don't know, I find this really interesting. Um, I also know there's tags around where it's what decks would you take if you're traveling or if you're desert on an island and such. Um, so I do give credit to those tags that have also inspired me to think of this uh, new one I'm doing. So, all right, guys, so let's get started. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm just going to get right into it. So the first world I want to start off is the lower world. And I'll zoom in just so you guys can read along with me. Um, so here we go. So the lower world is the vast space of the natural spirit world. It may be accessed by traveling energetically through a tunnel, a cave, the root of a tree or bush or a body of water. There is an unfortunate perception of this dimension in many cultures and religions that see it as a place of darkness and fire and where evil resides, a hell. This is untrue. It is really a beautiful landscape where power animals reside along with the elements of fire, water, air, earth, and plants, trees, rocks, and crystals. Here you will also find mythical animals like dragons and unicorns who have left the middle world. After transcending into the lower world, you will encounter a variety of landscapes such as deserts, mountains, lakes, or streams with a multitude of ecosystems thriving side by side in a cosmic balance. So I hope that guys gives you a little bit of a picture on that. Um, I might add, it a, add this to my description box or not. Um, it might be a little long, but let's go on right ahead. Let me just zoom out a bit. So um, the lower world, I've actually, I usually journey into the lower world. And for me, she is right. I see so many animals there. I see so much nature there. It oddly feels similar to our world. Um, but there is a sense 
of how would I put it? There is a sense of imagination. There is a sense of surrealism with it, right? But there's always, for me, when I go into the low world, a sense of the unknown. Sense of, I don't know where it's going to take me. And that's part of the excitement, too. But also, that could be part of the fear. All right? And so, the tarot deck and the oracle deck, I would bring to the lower world journey would be the Wild Unknown and the Nocturnal Oracle. I mean, the Wild Unknown, that that title right there just feels lower world to me. <laughs> I feel this deck, if I took it with me to the lower world, I feel like it would just fit in so well um, because it... It just has animals in it and it has nature in it and there's just you know so much of this energy um that i personally feel when i do journey into the lower world um yeah i just feel like this deck would be great And one thing I I forgot to mention, guys. So the shaman often depicts the three worlds by using the model of a tree. So the lower world would be like the roots of a tree. Middle world would be the trunk. And the upper world would be uh, the branches and the leaves. And the six of cups is definitely coloring and focusing on the roots of the tree. So that's definitely... You know, a sense of the lower world right there. It's like a little validation. I picked a good deck for this. But, you know, there's so many other decks that I could have picked. But the thing is, is that I picked decks that I'm really comfortable working with. And that I've worked with for a while. Because when I'm journeying, you know, I'm not just journeying with the deck. I'm also bringing in my power animals, uh, my guides, right? So there is that level of... Um, comfortable support, something you're familiar with. And definitely the spirit, uh, the Wild Unknown Tarot is definitely one that I'm comfortable with. But, you know, other decks I thought about was uh, the Mythical Creatures Tarot by Baba Studio. Um, there are dragons and unicorns in that deck. There are mythical creatures such as that and more in the lower world. Um, but I'm just not familiar with it. And also I thought about the Majestic Earth Tarot being a great choice for the lower world. But then again, I also haven't worked with that quite a bit. So there's a lot of decks that I have not worked with that would be really great for all these categories. But I'm just showing you guys um, the ones that I feel comfortable with and I'm familiar with. So, um, but for you guys, do whatever you guys want. Um, these can be new decks you show, decks you're comfortable with or not. Um, just make it your own, okay? So, uh, the Oracle deck is uh, the Nocturnal Oracle that I selected for the lower world. And this one is just... Well, first, I love pairing the Nocturnal Oracle with the Wild Unknown. I feel like these two decks just um, are really great together. Both are animistic, both are nature-based, um, so that's already perfect for the lower world, right? And yeah, I just, in this deck, it has the animals, it has the plants, and I believe it also has uh, crystals too, which all delve in the lower world. And so if I am journeying in the lower world, you know, and I see some uh, plant spirit come up to me, I could uh, definitely use this deck to help me understand the meaning or the energy of that particular animal, plant, or crystal. But yeah, I definitely would bring these two guys together.
All right, so interesting. Yeah, and I've actually, guys, I've actually journeyed with um, a manta ray before. And that was probably one of the most beautiful journeys I've actually been. Um, yeah, and it looked very similar to, um, I forget, I forgot which card it was. Oh, you know, it's the Wild Unknown um, Animal Spirit Oracle. And, you know, I thought about bringing that deck with along with the Wild Unknown Tarot because it would make sense. But... I haven't really been connecting with that deck. But going back to this Manta Ray journey I had, um, the Manta Ray in that deck, its spine has the chakra colors. And the Manta Ray that I journey with also had the chakra colors. And it was just such a beautiful journey. There was so much color, rainbows, ocean. And the Manta Ray was taking me into the sea, out of the sea, into the sky. Um, it was just beautiful. Just beautiful, beautiful journey I had. So that is that is it for the Lowell world. Um, yeah. So that was a pretty easy one for me, guys. Um, for me to select. So we are off to journey into the middle world. Okay, so the middle world, <laughs> I know the middle world pretty well. Um, but guys, I've chosen the Dust to Onyx with the Shamanic Healing Oracle to take me into the middle world. So let's go ahead and get our book out again here. And let me guys just zoom in and read you guys what it says. So the middle world is where we spend our daily lives. Let me just, okay. So the middle world is where we spend our daily lives in survival mode, programmed by the accumulation of our cultural conditioning and beliefs. This place is also called ordinary reality. Our ancestral spirits are found here, often still very attached to the lands in which they lived. We may also um encounter the spirits of the deceased who have not transitioned so it could be earthbound spirits because of our loss of connection to the natural world many human beings can no longer see nature spirits such as the elves fairies and dwarves who reside here with us in the middle world um the middle world can be a place of compassion but also non-compassion which is why only experienced shamans should engage with spirits who are stuck here now that is really good advice. Now, um, for those of you who do not know guys about me, um, this thing about me, but I, I do practice mediumship and also ancestral healing. And that's the angle that I took for journey into the middle world. And I picked very like ancestral decks um, that I use for ancestral healing and just general ancestral work or ancestral veneration. Um, and that's why I picked the Dust to Onyx and the Shamanic Healing Oracle cards. So let's go on ahead and take a look. And so this is a travel edition of the dust to onyx okay um i put these cards back in order actually um but i just feel this deck feels very middle middle world and i keep wanting to say middle earth which is really interesting but this deck definitely fits right in with connecting with your ancestors um and i've used this deck um in ancestral spreads that i have created uh i've used this within my mediumship practice 
Um, and, you know, I did say that I picked the Wild Unknown and the Nocturnal Oracle because I was comfortable working with it. And there were other decks I would have picked too. And this deck, it's a fairly new deck to me. But I already feel comfortable with it. And I feel very connected to um, the culture and the heritage of this. So I also believe, you know, in one of my past lives, I definitely have a connection to Africa, uh, possibly Libya or Egypt. I definitely feel there. Um, but there is some deep connection that I have and I just feel like with this deck, I don't know, I feel like I could get a lot of stories out of these ancestral spirits. And some of these feel like ancestors or energies that have not transition, transitioned, right? There is that element in this deck too. Um, and an ancestral healing, that's what it's about. It's about help healing, you know, your ancestral spirits that have not transitioned, who are not at peace. And I feel like this deck would be really great in communicating with them and asking them why, what's their story, how could you help, what's, what, what you know, what, what's the baggage? And... Yeah, and the Shamanic Healing Oracle cards, I mean, with that, with that intention, I mean, I love these cards. I love these cards. And I feel like not only do these two look great together, but this would definitely help in me discovering um, on how to help and heal these ancestral spirits um, who just have not transitioned letting go yeah ancestral spirit needs to let go and why not use a shamanic inspired deck for a shamanic journey right so th these are the decks i would take with me into the middle world and some runner-ups that I would also have picked would be the Ancestral Path Tarot. That was one that really I was struggling with either to pick this one or that one. But I didn't know which Oracle I would bring with it. That was the only issue. Um, you know, another deck that I could have also brought into this uh, would probably be... Um, like the urban tarot, because it shows very much our reality of the world. And the middle world is where we live day to day. So that was another tarot deck I thought about, but I haven't really used that deck in depth. Um, but yeah, I feel really comfortable working with these decks. So I, I, yeah, I really, I really like this combo I would bring with me into the middle world. All right, so on to the last world, which is the upper world. Now, this one was easy for me too. I think the middle world was the hardest for me. Um, but the upper world and lower world were the easiest. And let me, guys, read you what it says. All right. So the upper world is normally accessed by traveling energetically through the branches of a tree. So, guys, I did mention that. With the intention of ascending upward toward the sky and then breaking through an interdimensional membrane. Ooh, I love that. 
Uh, beyond the membrane, you'll find teachers and masters of higher vibrations. The experience here is of much light and angelic energy. It has a crystalline and etheric feeling. This world is a place of glistening trees and souls that look like bouquets of light orbs. You may find power animals here, although most of them are encountered in the lower world. But a power animal can help you reach this energetic plane. So guys, this place is where we have ascended masters. This is where we find like Palladians, you know, extraterrestrials. This is a place where angels and, you know, just higher beings, if I want to put it that way, higher, higher vibrational beings. So the angle I took with this um, was more on my own personal journeys to the upper world, which for me is me connecting with my higher self okay and the decks that i use to end with my higher self and for me also have that feeling that the book described um the very etheric uh kind of um i don't know if it said crystalline or celestial um energy but i chose um a deck that i also use in the gratitude challenge which is the osho zen and the sacred geometry activation oracle i feel like these two just look and feel very upper world for me and also i've worked with these for a long time and so um these are just great decks for me to use and i've used these also specifically to connect with my higher self and I believe sacred geometry also is very much of that upper world, of that universal blueprint of life and creation. And there's so much of these concepts and um, illustrated with this geometry that just feel very, just feel very upper world. Like I would not think I would find this in the middle world or the lower world, right? And so I would take this oracle with me, sacred geometry, um, and with the Osho Zen, I mean, there we go. It talked about Ascended Master, and then we have a Master card here. We have past lives, right? And I connect with my higher self to um, do past life work or past life regression. Um, and there's just, you know, there, there's that really spiritual guru aspect to this deck, which I find that works really well with my higher self in communicating with me through this deck and through the journey. And so, you know, such vibrant colors in this deck such vibrant colors in here. I mean, just the color palette looks great together. They both just feel like um, guidance, that higher guidance I would need to help me. And so that's what I would take with me for the upper world. And as for other decks I have considered um, using for the upper world, um, I thought about using the Star Child, or the Moon Child Tarot, um, the Light, I forgot, was it a Light Bringers? Or the Light Seeker, or Light Keepers Oracle. Um, there's like the Angels and Masters Oracle. Um, there's a lot of actually those Celestial, um, Upper World-ish type energetic decks. But as I said, I haven't really quite worked with them enough for me to be comfortable so I just decided not to use that and yeah so guys I hope this tag this video um I hope it interested you I hope you guys will whether you guys record yourself um doing this prompt or doing this tag or not I hope you guys give you a little bit of an idea, a little bit of inspiration to think of your own tarot collection and see which decks you would bring in your own shamanic journey to the three worlds. And I definitely encourage you guys to uh, 
research and look it up and also take a look at this amazing amazing book the shaman's guide to power animals and i will leave a link to this book in the description box definitely um and yeah so let me guys know what you guys thought of my deck selection what you guys thought of this tag um but i'm just going to leave you guys with that and uh just send you guys much love and light and just gratitude for watching this video and listening and yeah and i'll see you guys back for the next video all right take care guys